Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to do my saddle tree to the Rio Rondo pattern. All right. And I'm actually going to make this. I'll make it to sell. Um, so first thing is um, we don't need these pieces because if you're using my saddle tree pattern, um, the, this is part of that pattern because I consider this finished thing part of that. All right, so we don't need horn piece, horn neck, and we don't need this skyver piece because it's already done on the tree. All right, um, on this, I'm gonna be doing uh, the shortest one because it's my belief that's more correct. Okay, I don't need the kennel support piece. Um, I don't need, I don't use the reinforcement panels. This is not really a pleasure tree. I want to make it a, um, I want to make it a working saddle instead of a pleasure saddle. Okay, so they have available on their website a couple of PDFs. Now, I, this is 2006 when I downloaded that one. Alternate saddle patterns to fit edged corner plates. You don't cut these here if you're gonna use this, and so you don't need the reinforcement panels. All right, all right, come on, there we go. All right, so here they are. Um, these are all alternate, alternate syrup shapes, uh, alternate cantle, it's kind of cool. Um, and then rigging, okay? So you've got these different rigging straps, um, as well as the different uh, skirts and fenders. Um, and here's more. Um, find this on their website. So what I want to do is I, I'm going to take a copy of this, and I want um, I want to do the alternate uh, rigging strap. I want to do the alternate cantle, um, and then I might. I mean, some of these stirrups are. I mean, these stirrups are pretty blah. They're really basic. So I I might go ahead and try um, try one of these. Um, something that has some you know shape to it and they're also shorter because these real Ronda strips this is this is way too long see how they even shortened it up because these were always way too long um, so uh, I'm gonna copy this a couple times so I have different stirrups so I'm gonna do the short version of the lower skirt so um, that means the short version of the upper skirt as well. And then, um, I don't need these. I don't know how many of these I've thrown away. So yeah, like most people before I made my Western saddle patterns, um, I did the Rio Rondo. Just so you guys know, I've done this pattern and then did the pattern to my trees and did their tree to my pattern and all of that. Okay. Um, so I don't want that. That's trash. I don't need these uh, stirrups. I'm going to go ahead and do the cantle because I'm not sure. I know this cantle I can make work. Uh, this is new, I've never tried that before, so I kind of want to try it. Get rid of this. Okay, so now I got all my pieces for two, three ounce tooling leather. Uh, seat is going to be suede, and I'm gonna do all of this in suede. There we go, I'm gonna get to cutting this out. I'm not gonna make you watch. Okay, so it's been cut out, it's been dyed. It's been tooled and it's been edge coated. And here I'm working on the lower flaps or drape. And this is to put the D rings for the breast collar in um, the slots per the pattern. I find if I don't do this now, I will forget. So I'm um, using it all to open up the hole, push it in. We'll glue it down. We'll just go ahead and put that aside to dry. 
and then we're going to work on rigging. So these are 10 millimeter jump rings and I'm flattening the side that has the opening in order to make some D rings. D rings work better and that way I can also make sure the opening is hidden. Uh, this is the front rigging strap that I chose. I don't think I would choose this again. It seems really thick. But um, there we go, putting a D on both sides. Going to go ahead and clamp it so I can keep this moving. This is the rear. Using the width of the um, rear jockey to determine how wide that's going to be, where to put the, um, you know, finger pressing it for the width of the rear jockey. And that's where the other two are going to go. And again, we'll clamp that and set it aside to dry. The next step is to work out the layers. So we're going to have the rigging and then we also have um, the fenders. So in my tree, I can just tuck that right into those holes there and I'll glue them down. These are not adjustable. So we have to hope they're going to hit the right place um, on the model. Um, usually do. It's pretty close, close enough. I got this pattern down pretty good. So I'm just going to glue those right into place. Boy, I know exactly where that's going to be. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and glue the um, front rigging on. Fold it in half to find center. And then glue that right into place. Uh, for the rear rigging, glue it in half or fold it in half to find center. And then glue it, and it should be the widest part of the seat. And then here's my little baggie of, um, kind of call them scrap, but it's just pieces of lace. And what I need to do, um, these are already thin, basically don't need to be scived. And so I'm going to create the strap that goes between the front and rear jump ring. This is kind of essential to the construction of a, a double D ring saddle. It's a working saddle. It, it helps give some strength um, when you got, you know, a bull or a cow on the end of the line on the horn. Um, and it allows the back to work with the front. So that's a structural thing. That was, oops, that came apart. Um, so we'll get the other one in there. See, I try to work both sides at the same time on the saddle. Yeah, we got that in there. Okay, that's good. So that's huge right there. Now let's see where it fits. Now here I realized I don't like the rear uh, jockeys. I don't really like them. I think the hole's too big. I think they're too short. I should have picked the longer version. Hey, but that's why we do test saddles, you know? Everything else looks like it's going to fit okay. But I do a lot of dry fitting to see how it's going. To go. Check in the fit, dry fit, check, and then uh, go ahead and glue it in place. I'm still not all that thrilled with it, really not all that thrilled with it. Um, and it's that rear jockey that's the problem. I don't know how I'm going to get that to piece in place. So I'm trying to make do for the purposes of this video. Um, show you that um, every time you do something different on your pattern, a different tree or a different pattern, you really need to know that it'll probably be a failure the first time. And in this case here, all the pieces are working except for that rear jockey and it's just messing me up. So what I should have done um, is placed um, the front where I wanted it to be and then the rear jockey would just be even more glaringly obvious. Well, I'm trying to make it work, and uh, in this case, it wasn't working. So we're going to go ahead and clamp that in place. Let the um, glue set up. Okay, so we're going to work on the seat, and uh, just a dry fit right there in the center. Glue it down. Pretty simple, center it. There's that lovely little um, hole there that goes right in the hole where the tree is. That's where you stick your hand in to pick the uh, saddle up. It's a, nice to have. The horn works too, but it's actually a lot easier to grip it using that. 
uh, hole in the front. This, uh, make sure you don't glue it down onto your stair fenders. So pull it forward um, around the pommel. Clamp is needed. Now the glue has pretty much set up everywhere. So I'm gonna now work on the back of the seat. And um, I obviously need to trim. There's way too much there, so we'll trim that around. Um, Got to glue that suede down in the back. It's sticking up, so. Oh, I'm back to that jockey. Really becoming obvious, that jockey. I'm putting it on there, but I'm just like, it's, it's too, it's not going to work. It's not going to work, but here I'm making this video for you guys. Got to show you mistakes. You can't learn um, without making mistakes. Mistakes are just part of the learning process. And uh, mistakes don't mean you're a loser or a failure. It means you're learning. You become a loser and a, f a loser when you um, give up, when you stop trying, when you say, oh, it's too hard for me. You got to get through that learning curve. And this is part of it, is going, there's something wrong with this pattern. What do I need to do to fix it? But I pushed on anyways. Now we're going to put the front, or sorry, the side jockeys on. Um, works a little bit better if they're slightly skived, but this is such a thin uh, leather. It's a kip tooling leather. So it um, is naturally thinner than a regular cow tooling leather. I got these clamps originally um, at the dollar store, the long ones, and worked so well that I went and got more at um, Home Depot. I had a bucket of the small clamps. I use them all the time now, probably my favorite clamps. Okay, so go ahead and tuck that in right where it's supposed to be, right there. Okay. So far, I'm thinking, okay, that's great. Let it dry. But we need to work on that cantle. Now, I knew this was going to be a little long because my seat isn't as is, um, quite as big, but uh, finally glue it. That suede, um, and I didn't clean my hands, so now I got glue on my suede. Hate that. Um, so we're going to um, get rid of some of that glue. If you're lucky, uh, scraping it when it's um, dry will uh, have it come off of that suede. Don't count on it, though. <laughs> there are a lot of times it just won't come off. All right, so now we're doing a dry fit. And then I'm going to make little marks where I need to trim. And I need to trim from each side so that it's symmetrical. That's what I'm doing here is trying to uh, get back to the, the shape it was supposed to be. And uh, So I skived it on the edge, thin it down a little bit. And now we're going to be very carefully uh, glue that into place. Now, usually I would spread the glue with my finger before I put it down, but I um, didn't. And this is what happens. So now I've got a lot of glop right over there on my suede. I'm trying to ignore it right now, um, hoping that it'll dry enough that I can just boop do that. <laughs> That's up enough and it's not too wet. It, it should let go. Of course, because I, I didn't smooth that on with my finger, and then wipe my fingers with glue on the suede. All right, now we're going to put the billet straps on. You know what those look like. It's just a fold over. You can add the detail. I actually didn't add the triangle detail like I usually do. And again, because I'm trying to be speedy, I'm just going to use these little party favor baby shower uh, clips or clamps hold those in place. Oh, now I'm working on the six uh, concho beads and the pens. And so the front ones need to have your uh, latigo holder and your cinch holder. And once we got all six of those ready to go, I always start with the middle right there. The middle one, the middle pair, because if you can get those where they should be, the whole thing will be uh, really nice. Now I do a 90 and then I spin again 90. So going back on itself, which may not be a 90, I don't know. 90 and then a 90 back the other direction where it came. 
and then that way um, it could be a 180 come to think of it all right make sure you get your um, cinch holder on the, the right side and your um, you know, your lateral holder on your right side left side your cinch holder on the right side so there we go again a spin and then I'm going to get rid of the points so that I don't have so much. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while the point will work through the covering suede on the back. And um, so I like to get rid of the point just in case. This is uh, the back two, um, trying to place them evenly, um, measuring really to the horn. So I'm using the end of the swell of the, the horn or the pommel. Sorry, the pommel is where I'm going to put those and, you know, pull and then bend and then twist it. And that's the last two pins. So I'm looking at that thinking, yeah, whatever, I guess it'll work. Not what I expected. It didn't look like what I want it to look like. It looks like an amateur saddle, but hey, it's almost done, right? Let's just get it over with. So, yeah, that was silly. We'll go ahead and put on the backing. And I'm just using suede. Um, nothing. I don't think I even have any chamois left. I gotta put that on my shopping list. So uh, I usually do half at a time because it takes so long for the glue to come out of the bottle for me. And that way I have the working time that I need. You may find, uh, well, first of all, in the Rio Rondo pattern, they don't have this piece specified. It's weird. So you have to use two of the, the pattern piece so that you can get this one here for the backing, if that makes sense. So I had to print another copy and then use the same pattern piece for uh, the suede that equaled the um, jockeys or the lower drape or whatever. Now, because these have been, the leather has been um, wetted for uh, dye and then also for tooling it shrank and that's why it doesn't fit perfectly this is a horn wrap okay um, I've already I have a video on how to do the horn wrap so I'm not going to go through it here it, it's not really essential to the pattern it's just a detail for working saddles that I, I like to have on there um, basically it, it just saves the horn when you're using a rope it saves the saddle from being destroyed or at least the leather there so it's um i don't know look at some videos on what happens when the caballeros have a um a bull on the other end of a line and they've got it wrapped around the horn and it can spin and smoke right so the horn wrap is really there to protect the saddle from from that behavior Okay, so the horn wrap is on, and um, I haven't done the, the stirrups yet. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a, oh yeah, I'm trimming the excess because of the shrinkage. Totally normal. Don't freak out. It just means your leather shrank a little bit when it was got wet. Um, so I did a metal on the outside and then the leather on the inside for the stirrups. Um, might do a video on that. I don't know if you guys want me to do videos on all the different stirrup types that I can think of. Um, but there you go. That's supposedly our finished saddle, and I hated it. It's too far back. So I ripped the backing off, and I ripped all of the pins. Don't be afraid to do this. I mean, if it doesn't look right, take it apart redo it so um, here we are taking off the pins and pulling out the conchos you have to do it very carefully so you don't break anything but now you got the holes you know the holes go except for that rear jockey okay um, and that was the piece that offended me and because it was so short that meant all of this offended me so i did what i should have done and I pushed it forward so that this is sitting where it should be. Um, so basically, how do you say, the, the front jockey pieces should be right 
flush at the top in that opening with the lower drape. Okay, so um, they and then here I'm taking um, it's a copy of the real rondo pattern, and I'm taking this rear jockey. Okay, and then that's my square saddle pattern. Should probably make that rear jockey bigger, but anyways. What I need to do is I need the opening of this rear piece of my pattern onto the Rio Rondo one. So I'm just going to kind of some of that out of there. And I, I folded it to get exactly half. Now my pattern piece has that black line, so that's that's the half mark or the center line. And I'm going to um, put it onto the Rio Rondo so that it's flush in the front. Then we're going to fit it to the saddle because I'm going to remake this entire piece. I threw the other one out. And uh, that's a lot of what I'm doing here is deciding, okay, I need the longer version. All right, so that's something that, you know, it was just obvious to me I need the longer version with the short version of the, um, short version of the Rio Rondo. Okay, so keep that in mind. Didn't know it till I did it. And now here I'm just going to try and make sure that I, I got it so that it fits. Nice snug fit. It's good. Much better than the other way. So now I'm going to dye it. I'm going to edge coat it. Yeah, it's still wet. The dye is still wet. I was in a hurry to get this done. Used a pro dye. Um, and I'm tooling it. And it's still wet from the dye. So well, I don't really recommend this, uh, except that this is a pro dye, so it's not uh, it's not like the USMC black with a lot of residue. This here is a pro dye, and um, these uh, this is a set of um, Tandy uh, stamps that are good for border, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that tooled in. Um, but there you go, that's the stirrups with the silver. Um, that's the finished saddle. Looks so much better with the new jockey. Um, I can't use my special seats on these. That's the Bozelle from the Bozelle um, video that I did. Needed a home. Um, that uh, saddle pad I did on my um, embroidery machine. And um, overall, it turned out pretty good. Uh, just um, keep in mind, you may have to do what I do, and that's um, use paper pieces to fit that rear jockey, and that's how it works. So thank you for having time to spend with me today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and have a really good day.